everyone and welcome back to my channel turn ups to tangerines and today we are going to make uh, our British steak and ale pie so the first thing we have to do is make a pie crust so in my sifter here I have two cups of just all-purpose flour and it's unbleached and then I'm just going to add a teaspoon of salt and I'm going to add that. We're just going to mix this lightly together. Give that a sift through. And then I'm going to cut in my three-fourths cup of Crisco. And I am using Crisco. And there's my cold water. I just took that out of my freezer you need good cold water or ice water and this is three-fourths cup of Crisco and I'm going to cut this in with my pastry blender Larry no 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 Larry no 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 let get down there Larry I don't think you're gonna want this so no I don't think so we're just gonna do this number and cut it in Set that aside. And we're just going to lightly cut that in. If you don't want to make your own crust, or if you don't, you know, you just don't have time, or maybe you've never made one before, but as you can see, it isn't all that difficult. Um, to make your own. I do have, I always usually have um, like a pie crust or uh, Pillsbury ready to roll pie crust. I usually have one or two in my freezer. Now today I only have one up there. So I thought, well, I'm going to need a top and a bottom crust. So that doesn't really help me. And I thought, so I guess I'm going to make my own here which my husband would prefer a homemade crust anyway. For convenience sake, I do like the ready, the ready crusts. I do. They are just, I, I'm not crazy about the frozen ones, but uh, they're fine for, you know, when you don't need a top crust. But for, you know, in a pinch, I do like the ready made. I buy them all the time too, so, I mean... You never know when that strike for that urge of having a pie will strike you. Plus, it's nice to have it for pot pies and, you know, this sort of thing. This is a British steak and ale, which means it's going to have beer in it. And um, I thought I'd give that a try. I've never made one, but I uh, thought, well, this is a year for trying new things, I think, as far as recipes are concerned. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, um, this is a two tablespoon uh, measuring cup, and I'm, or measuring spoon, and I'm just going to add two cups of water, and you just kind of do this number here, and then you take a fork and you just kind of toss it around. And one thing about it, making your own crust at home, I mean it is very simple to do, but as you can see. But once you get it going here, overworking it is usually, whoop, is usually your downfall. Okay, so this is another two cups, or two, <laughs> two tablespoons, two cups of water wouldn't be good. Two tablespoons all together, that's been four now. And it is starting to come together here nicely. And, hmm, let's see here. Another thing is you don't want to overwork your dough. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to work this together and then I'm going to um, cut it in half and save one for the top and one for the bottom. But I probably, oh, I'm going to probably more than likely, I will uh, refrigerate it for a good oh, hour because sometimes then it's easier to work with for me too. You know, I find it gives you a little, let's get some time to set up. Okay. And here, this looks pretty good here. That was six tablespoons of ice cold water or cold water. 
And this looks like it's going to come together real nicely here. So I don't think I'm going to need any more water. And one thing I will say, too, if you're going to make your, you know, homemade crust, and, well, and that's, you know, like I said, how hard is this, really? Not very. Um, do use Crisco. I have used, well, I've used the off-brand before myself of Crisco, or I guess they call it shortening. It's not Crisco, it's shortening. And uh, it just, I don't know, it just doesn't work out the same, I don't think. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to let this sit just a few seconds, maybe about three minutes or so. That's what I like to do. And, um, and let some of the flour get absorbed by the water. And then I'm going to show you what else we do. And I will be right back. I'm just going to um, go get my um, saran wrap. That I forgot to bring over. Oh, wow, I'm going to have this all over the place, I see, of course. Okay. There we go. And that should be good. I'm going to just lightly go like this and kind of get it in one big, um, big thing here. And we're going to take it out of the bowl, and they're all coming out really nice. There we go. I'm going to push that in there. And I'm just going to lightly set it down here. I don't did put flour on there, of course. But I don't think I'm going to need it. I'm just going to lightly go like that. And I'm going to cut it in half with my hand. And just do this number. There we go. There. Trying to go like that. And then you're going to pat, pat them both into a disc like that just you know roughly and you've got your top crust and your bottom crust okay and I'm going to take off my gloves only because if I don't I don't think I'm going to be able to do my cling cling wrap very well it isn't open yet. And I really don't want to be struggling. I have enough problems with this stuff at the time. I don't know why, but I do. I, you know, my husband always says to me, you've got to be the only person I know that practically, you know, wraps yourself up in the saran wrap before you even get it going. And as you can see, this isn't working real well either. Okay, here we go. Oh, here we go. Yippee. What do you know? <laughs> it worked. Okay, so there we go. We got that going good. We're just going to move this aside here. Over back in the bowl. We're going to move you out of the way. I'm going to move you down here. Push that aside. And uh, whoop. there we go. One here, and one there, and there we go. There's one disc, and that's, like I said, that's about all you got to do. And uh, that didn't take all that long. And we're just going to let that go like that, and we're going to do this number, fold it over, go like that, go like that, and it's done. You know, let that refrigerate for, oh, it says up to, 50, you know, 15 minutes, not up to 50 minutes. It says at least about 15 minutes where I will probably let it in there a little longer than that. Only because I haven't even started my filling yet for my pie. So I won't be needing my crust till I at least get my pie done, pie filling done. So here we go. And let me just turn this over. And you got your crust. And like I said, you can do this pie crust and any kind of pie. Fruit pie, any kind. So, 
my husband's a pie eater. Not a big cake eater, but he does like pie. So, and I do too. So we're kind of even on that. Between pie and cookies. So there we go. I got this one done too. I'm gonna go like that. Turn that over. And then give it a little squish like that. And put one on the bottom and one on top. And in the refrigerator it goes till it's needed.